What is going on, wonderful people? It's Metacosis Perfectionalis. Welcome back to my mathematics playlist and my physics playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the measuring units, the physical quantities, and the tools that we use for measurement. Today, I'll teach you how to convert from one unit to another. For example, from kilograms per liter to milligrams per cubic centimeters from meters to angstroms and backwards we'll talk about density conversions volume conversions and pressure conversions what's the difference between the atm the tor the pascal and the millimeters of mercury what is a milli what is a micro what is a nano what is a kilo what is a mega what is a giga Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my physics playlist. Please watch these videos in order. In physics, we have physical quantities, we have measuring tools, and we have measuring units. For example, mass, well, you need a scale for this, and the measuring unit is kilograms. Length is a physical quantity. The measuring tape is the tool of measurement, and the measuring unit is meters. What are the seven standard international base units of matter? They are the length in meters, time measured in seconds, temperature measured in Kelvin. Meter is lowercase m, second is lowercase s, but Kelvin is uppercase k. Mass is measured in kilograms, this is the standard unit, and this is a big difference between physics and chemistry. In chemistry, we measure mass in grams because we're working in the lab with a sample. For example, a sample of sodium chloride. So we measure it with a gram. But in physics, no. Oh, the standard international unit for mass is the kilogram, not the gram. The amount of substance is measured in moles. Remember that the mole is just a number. Just like a dozen is 12, a ream is 500. The mole is just a number. One mole equals 6.022 times 10 power 23 of that thing. So one mole of sodium atoms equals 6.022 times 10 power 23 atoms of sodium. Please do not confuse the magnitude of the electric current with the intensity of light also known as luminous intensity. The electric current magnitude is measured in amperes. Luminous intensity is measured in candela. In the future, if I have a daughter, I will call her candela. Such a beautiful name. In physics, we have quantities. Some of them are fundamental, like the seven fundamental quantities that we talked about, the length, the distance, the time, the temperature, the luminous intensity, the mass, the amount of material or the amount of matter, and the electric current magnitude. And we have derived physical quantity that we can derive from the fundamentals. For example, look at area. What is area? Area is simply length multiplied by something similar, width. Length by width will give you area. This is a length, this is another type of length. Multiply them together, you get an area. How about volume? You multiply length three times. So it's length times width times height. How about speed? Speed is distance over time. How about velocity? It's displacement over time. The lingo of physics and mathematics. A kilo of anything is 1,000 of that thing. So kilogram is 1,000 grams. A mega of anything is a million of that thing. So one megabyte equals a million bytes. Hey, what's the difference between byte and bit? If you know the answer, comment below. A giga of anything is a billion of that thing. How about centi? Centi is one one hundredth of something. So one centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. A milli of anything is one one thousand of that thing. So one millimeter is one one thousand of a meter. One milliliter is one one thousandth of a liter. A micro of anything is one one millionth of that thing. So one microampere equals one one millionth ampere. A nano of anything is one one billionth of that thing. The most important skill to master when it comes to unit conversion is to create your own conversion factor ratio. For example, suppose that we want to convert from liters to milliliters. So what do we have? We have one liter of water and we're trying to find out how many mLs are there. So let's do it. You start with what you have, which is the number that you want to convert from. You put that on the left side. In this case, it's one liter. You put down your multiplication sign. 
which could be an X, it could be an asterisk like this, or it could be a dot, depending on your culture and traditions. Then you create a conversion factor ratio. We know that one liter contains 1,000 milliliters because a milli of anything is one one thousandth of that thing. And then you multiply one liter multiplied by 1,000 ml divided by one liter. You cancel liters with liters, cancel the one with the one, you end up with 1,000 ml, and that's it. There is another rule of thumb that helps a lot. When you're converting from a big quantity to a smaller one, you multiply. For example, when you convert from 2 liters to 2 ml, which one is bigger, the liter or the milliliter? Of course, the liter is bigger. So I'm converting from big to small. And when you convert from big to small, you have to multiply. I know that one liter contains a thousand ml, so I simply multiply the two by 1000 to get the final answer of 2000 ml. And this is how you convert from something big to something small. Let's do the opposite. Suppose that I have 3000 ml and I want to convert this to liters. When you go from milliliters to liters, you're going up from small to big, so you have to divide. In this case, you're dividing by a thousand and this will give you three liters. Let's convert 10 kilograms into grams. What should we do? You start with what you have, which is 10 kilograms, and you create your conversion factor ratio. We know that one kilogram has 1000 grams. This is what I have, the kilograms, and this is what I want, the grams. Multiply 10 by 1000 equals 10,000 grams, or to put it in the proper scientific notation, 1 times 10 power 4 grams, and this is the answer. Let's do this one. 100 milligrams into grams. You start with what you have, and then you create a conversion factor ratio. Put milligrams down here so we can cancel milligrams with milligrams. We know that one gram contains a thousand milligrams. Cancel milligrams with milligrams, and your answer will be 100 divided by a thousand. So you can cancel two zeros with two zeros, and you will end up with one over 10 grams or 0 0.1 grams. Keep in mind that one meter equals 10 power 10 angstroms. Conversely, one angstrom equals 10 raised to the negative 10th power meter. Volume conversions, one liter has 1000 ml. One ml equals one cubic centimeter. You can write cubic centimeter like this or like this. CC means cubic centimeter. So there is no difference between the CC and the ml. They are equivalent. One cubic meter equals 1000 liters. And since one liter contains 1000 ml, 1000 times 1000 equals a million. One cubic meter equals a million cubic centimeters, which is the same as a million mls of course you can also arrive at this million by another way just convert meter into centimeter not cubic meter to cubic centimeter but just meter to centimeter what do you do you multiply by 100 which is 10 power 2 but how about if i told you that this meter is cubed and the centimeter is cubed you simply cube this factor so when you cube it like this you simply multiply the exponents 2 times 3 is 6 and this is where you get the million from. Let's practice with this example. One cubic meter equals how many millimeters? First, you start by converting the meter alone into millimeter. We know that one meter contains a thousand millimeters. But what if I told you that this is cubed and this is cubed? Then you cube this number, which will give me 10 power. Three times three is nine. And this is where you get the billion from. Let's put it all in one sentence. One cubic meter equals a thousand liters, which equals a million milliliters, which equals a million cubic centimeters, because one ml is the same as one cubic centimeter. So these numbers have to be equal. And you can write cubic centimeter this way or this way. So these numbers are the same. And we established that one cubic meter equals a billion cubic millimeters. Let's practice with this one. Please pause the video and try to answer this yourself. Start with what we have, which is 10 cubic meters, and then you want to convert this to cubic centimeters. Start first by asking yourself from meter to centimeter. Well, this is 10 power 2. But what if I told you that you cube this and you cube this? So you have to cube this, which is basically 10 power 6. So this is my conversion factor. One cubic meter equals a million cubic centimeters, and then you cancel this with this, and your final answer will be 
10 to multiplied by 10 power 6 is 10 power 7. Write it in the proper scientific notation. It looks like this. And of course, the end result will be cubic centimeters. Pressure units. The standard unit of pressure is the pascal. One pascal is the same as one newton per squared meters. Is the same as one kilogram divided by meters times second squared. Is the same thing as one joule per cubic meter. Can we convert from bar to pascal and vice versa? Yes, one bar is 100,000 pascals. One atm of pressure, this is atmospheric pressure. So if you are living at sea level, the odds are the pressure outside your home is one atm. Or one atmospheric pressure. This is equivalent to 760 torr, which is equivalent to 760 millimeters of mercury, which is equivalent to 1.013 times 100,000 pascals. And since pascal is less than the bar, which means the bar is 100,000 pascals, therefore, if you want to convert this to bar, you simply eliminate this 100,000. So you end up with 1.013 bar. Basically, the ATM is very close to the bar. The tour is equivalent to the millimeters of mercury. Let's do this, people. Let's convert from bar to Pascal. You start with what you have, which is two bar, and then create your conversion factor ratio. The bar is greater than Pascal. Greater by how much? It is 100 thousand pascals and then you cancel the bar with the bar and you end up with 2 multiply by 10 power 5 pascals how about this one 10 pascal equals blank atm well you create your conversion factor start with what you have which is 10 pascal and we know that 1 atm is about a hundred thousand pascals so here is one ATM and here is about, but not quite a hundred thousand Pascals. And then you can cancel Pascal with Pascal. Then you're going to divide. You have 10 in the numerator and you have all of this in the denominator. Plug this into your calculator. This is about 9.87 times 10 power negative five ATM as the final answer. You can use the exact same trick with currency. Now, please pause the video and try to answer this yourself and let me know your answer in the comments. And here is another question for you. Please pause the video, answer it, and let me know your answer in the comments. This is milliampere, but this is microampere. If you want to learn about the MLT system or dimensional formula, there is a separate video on this topic in my physics playlist. To download all of these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. I have notes for physics, notes for general chemistry, biochemistry, organic chemistry, biology, anatomy, physiology, and more. Help me make more videos by supporting the channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. To learn about all the drama that takes place in your kidneys, proximal tubule, loop of Hanley, distal tubule, collecting ducts, etc., download my kidney physiology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.